Hi, welcome back to Lipiat. Sorry. Uh, so we're finishing off Charlie the African Elephant. Now Charlie is based at uh, Pretoria Zoo in Africa and he's 38 years old and he came, we found out, from a circus and then he was rescued and put into protection by the zoo basically and that's where he's going to live the rest of his life. So um, this is the reference I'm using, well references, and these were provided by Clive Howard, so thank you to him, the photos are awesome. Uh, Clive was also nominated a charity called Wild at Life, and they basically rescue, rehabilitate and release wildlife all over the world, including elephants. So if you hop over to lippiart.tv, um, any donations to that um, we will be sharing with Wild at Life Charity and the rest of the money will also go to um, my personal projects which is Project Africa, uh, Fair Feathers and Wild Endeavours and a Conquered or Challenge in which I actually take challenges from people. So if you've got any questions or ideas for what you'd like to see me do next please join us in the chat and also let us know where you're from <coughs> excuse me so should have organized my pencils before i went live but hey there we go So Gemma will be reading your comments while I'm drawing and I am more than happy to answer pretty much anything whether it's about the animal I'm drawing or how I'm doing it or disability whatever you can think of feel free to join us and have a good chat. This will be the last video we're doing with Charlie. I'm hoping to finish tonight. And I will post it on my social media. So make sure you follow uh, Lippy Art on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're on pretty much all of them. <laughs> Charlie is a male and um, what was I going to say? Charlie is a male and in the wild he would either be living on his own or as part of a bachelor herd with other males because elephants are a matriarchal species which means the main heads are generally ruled uh, by females and the only males that you get in those heads are the ones that are still with their mothers so once they leave they only really meet up to breed <clears throat> and the elephants are actually very important they're known as keystone species which means they basically maintain the natural environment um, during the dry seasons they will dig up riverbeds with their tusks to release water which helps other animals survive um, also using their brute force they make pathways through dense vegetation and that enables other animals that are smaller to access other areas. Um, they've actually proven that, well, they've found that in areas where elephants have 
kind of disappeared because of poetry or for whatever other reason, um, that those areas have actually turned into deserts. So that's how important they are to the environment. Charlie is only in the prime of his life. They can live up to about 70 years old, just like us. And right now, I'm just building up some shades to create contrast. Like I say, if you've got any questions, Leave a message and Gemma will read it out loud and I'll answer. Earlier on we actually had a question, um, can elephants really fly? <laughs> and so far, there's only one that I'm aware of in history, and it was parachuted. Um, if anyone's got Disney Plus, it's called Dumbo Drop. And they had to parachute an elephant to a village. I won't ruin the story. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a real, it's, a, it's a true story, though, and it's definitely worth watching. <laughs> Parachute is probably the closest we'll find. <laughs> now, African elephants like Charlie can actually live, uh, stand up to 13 feet tall and weigh around 7 tons. Which which is just I'm trying to get the direction of these lines right because he's got like some really interesting wrinkles and patterns and everything that makes him unique. Genuinely thought doing just this section today wouldn't have taken a whole day so far. <laughs> Well, that's how much detail they have. You've got to take the time to do it. Female elephants are actually pregnant for about 22 months, which anyone who's had a baby will tell you they were desperate after nine. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah. Eight for me, and that was enough. <laughs> and when they're born, baby elephants are approximately 200 pounds, which is. Oh, that's going to be painful, right? <laughs> I apologise if you can hear fireworks, I don't know what idiot's setting them off, but... They're an idiot. I can, I can, yeah, I'm very aware of them. It's like, 
not even both right now. And if it was, you why it was. But anyway, yeah, they're um they're huge animals and they get they've got quite a big surface area, so they'll get hot very easily. So they they have these ginormous ears with lots of blood vessels that radiate heat to keep them cool. And you can tell from the ears what type of elephant they are. So this is a bit difficult because they're cropped in the picture, but African elephants have ears very much shaped like the continent of Africa. Whereas Asian elephants in general are much smaller and they have um, a saddle shape back whereas African elephants have like an arch on their back and their trunks bearing in mind an elephant's trunk has about 40,000 muscles in it are we offline? What? We're on. You don't know? Just lies at the bottom here. You're on. We have um, a little oh. fact from Serbus Quilts UK. Hey. Elephants have wrinkles, wrinkles, wrinkles everywhere on their torus, but no one knows why. They've got wrinkles everywhere. We know why. We yeah, we know why. This earlier. Um, we actually discussed this earlier. Yeah, wrinkles um, serve to store water. <clears throat> uh, they keep the animal hydrated and keep them cool. So the hot, the found that scientists have found that. Um, in areas that are hottest, elephants have more wrinkles, and in areas where it's cooler, ele elephants have less wrinkles. I found another little fact. You found another fact. Another little fox, right? Yeah. <laughs> An elephant's brain weighs five kilograms. Five kilos of brain. Yes. That's impressive. <laughs> um, their brains have more complex folds than any other animal except whales, which scientists think this is a major factor in making some of the world's most intelligent animals on Earth. Um, elephants also have one of the most developed hippocampus areas. The emotional. Uh, yes, this yeah. is responsible for the emotional um, awareness. Um, studies also indicate that elephants are superior to the human race. Um, by keeping track of multiple objects in their 3D space. Alright. <clears throat> That's very interesting. Um, elephants will commonly show the following emotions. Grief, humour, compassion, cooperation, self-awareness, tool use, playfulness, <laughs> and they have excellent learning skills. They do, they have a huge memory as well. Um, in fact, the memory storage part of the brain, I can't remember the name of it, but um, it's about half, it takes up half, yeah. almost half of their whole brain. 40%, I think. 40%. Um, so and that's where the phrase comes from, that an elephant never forgets. Um, an elephant in Korea surprised its zookeepers by independently learning to mimic the commands 
that they gave it, successfully learning eight words and their context. <laughs> That's cool. Um, there have been many reports of elephants showing compassion towards other species, um, such as rescuing trap trap dogs at considerable co cost to the self. So they will happily put themselves at risk to save another species. That's quite um, unusual. Um, interesting. A little, little silly fact here. No matter what the movies have taught us, one elephants can't fly, <laughs> other than with parachutes and aeroplanes. And two, they don't like peanuts. They don't like peanuts. They don't like peanuts. Well, that contradicts what we said earlier. They can shell a nut. They can shell a nut and they will eat them, but they don't actually like them. They don't actually care for them. I know they like a lot of fruit and sweet things. Sarah's replied to the comments, that's very interesting, but Angus's favourite song is now factually incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> We're very sorry. <laughs> very sorry. <laughs> Not sorry. <laughs> you have to change the words to your song. Because now we know. Because <laughs> now we know why. Um, I don't blame the elephants for doing this one. What? The elephants, female elephants, have been known <coughs> to induce labour by self-medicating with certain plants. <laughs> they got sick of work in 22 months. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, baby elephants are initially blind and some take to sucking their trunks for comfort. Oh, like a baby sucking their thumb? Yes. There have been many scans of elephants sucking their trunks inside the mother's womb. Well, they've been doing it in the womb as well? Yes, That's which cool. is something human babies do as well. They suck their thumb in the womb. Interesting. It's frustrating me that these dark sat are in dark enough. My God. A mother of a calf will select several babysitters in her herd so that she has time to eat and enough time to produce sufficient amount of milk. Why can't we do that in humans? I know, right? <laughs> And they only have a maximum of two babies every four years. Oh. And that's partly because of how long it takes to raise the baby, because they're dependent on their parents. They're not um, fully functional. They can walk uh, within a couple of hours, but... A little bit about the males. The males, obviously, once they become adolescent, will around 12 years old, will leave the herd and go to temporary bachelor herds, as I know, until they become mature enough to live alone. And then a male elephant will normally live solitary or move from herd to herd. Homosexual behaviour between the male elephants is common, common and well documented. Wow, that's interesting. Um, I didn't know this either. Asian elephants don't run, whereas African elephants will. Oh, right. Why is that? Does it say? It doesn't. It just sells me that. I'm going to have to look deeper into that one. Yeah, I'm intrigued. Why, why do African elephants run, but not Asian elephants? Less space. <laughs> you are? Less space. Less space. <laughs> Maybe it's their size difference or something. Leg length? That could be. I don't know, I'm just guessing to... based on anatomy now. We're going to have to look that one up. Yeah, the tip of an elephant's trunk, uh, they have little 
appendages that look a lot like fingers and African elephants actually have two fingers and Asian elephants only have one but then that's opposite in the feet and the toes what is it the Asians that have more? Asians have five on the front, four on the back. So, yeah, a Asians have more toenails than African elephants. One more toenail. Is that right? Is that, yes, yeah. Oh, many places, Sarah, many places. What's that? Where are you getting these facts from? I've got several that I'm taking them from. We're trying to pick science -y, uh mostly yeah, like the most zoo pages, and, pages. or uh, National Geographic are quite reliable. <clears throat> Some of it I remember from college. <laughs> Not a lot, but some. Uh, that I will retract that fact of Asian elephants can't run. It has re very recently been changed. It's been re changed, so yeah, Asian elephants recently, can run. They were thought to... Um, so basically they were thought to because they're lazy. They were thought <laughs> that it wasn't possible for them to run because of the gait of an elephant. Oh, right. Um, they, tro they would be able to trot or walk, but they didn't run. Um, but scientists have proven different and elephants can run. I can just imagine that experiment disproving it, like, what did, what did they do, chase them? <laughs> <laughs> How fast um, can you go? A team of biomechanics used kinetic measurement to measure the speed of the Asian elephant. Um, thermal imaging cameras were used to track the movement. Ah, that's interesting. So Asian elephants can run, and so can African elephants. And I think, if I remember rightly, uh, the last time we found out that they run at around 24, 25 miles, an hour. miles per hour. They are one of the only animals who can't jump though. They can balance very well. They can, yeah, they can balance very well, but they can't jump. And when they run, they they can't lift all feet off the ground. They can only they've got to have one foot on the ground at all times. This is the first day of the end of your life It's an emotion, it just don't seem right I get the feeling every time that you hear That it's all downhill from here <clears throat> So now, got all these big wrinkles under the armpits And you'll notice his belly is distinctly lighter and that's because of reflected light so light coming down from the sun and bouncing off the ground a lot of people make the mistake of making all of that dark but I'm not going You go first. Although an elephant may look to be light grey or brown in colour, pink in colour, there's nothing <laughs> to do with their actual colouring. Um, their colouring, they are actually a greyish black, but due to the fact they take so many mud baths, 
they end up looking the same colour as the soil around them. And that probably helps with camouflage too. It does. Um, but yeah, the main reason is protection from sunburn, obviously, um, insects, temperature control, and it moisturises the skin. Yeah, skincare is really important for elephants. It's not really got any, a lot of fur to protect it. An elephant actually has very few sweat glands. Um, the sweat, the few sweat glands that it does have are located on the foot. Um, this results in skin that is very dry and rough touch. Um, but it's actually very soft and supple. Interesting. Um, if you look an, at an elephant on a hot day, you may be able to see wet areas around the top of the toenails from the sweat wet. Oh, right. So I would like to know, what's the difference between your pencil? Um, they're all different hardnesses. So the harder a pencil is, the lighter it is, and well, the charcoal, not the pencil. And the softer the charcoal is, the darker it goes. So this is a dark one. It just means I can get nicer blacks, but it also means it wears out very easily because it's very soft. Which that one's going to need doing. <laughs> I got a digi one. <laughs> I tend to have multiples of the same colour. Colour. Uh, softness, even. Thank you. I've lost that one. <laughs> uh, just so I can keep going while doing a shot. <laughs> uh, I also use smudges. So things like this which I can't remember the name of but they're basically rubber tips but they don't erase this they just blend and then we have these which are made of paper compressed very tightly and they're good for um, blending very softly so it doesn't really leave much of like any lines or anything like that And then sometimes I also blend with the white pencil as well. Because again, they all, they all kind of have different effects. And it depends what part of the animal you're at and what's more suitable, but... Never be afraid to experiment, that's what I always say. So, little facts about the elephant's teeth. Uh, as, as we've previously said, obviously the tusks are just teeth, um, which are modified in sizes. Um, an elephant has four molars. Um, the molars are located within the jaw. An African elephant will go through six sets of molars in its lifetime. Later in life, a single molar can be 10 to 12 inches long and weigh more than 8 pounds. God, 8 pounds? That's got to be jewelry. Um, an elephant's molar is wide and flat, which is perfect for grinding, like I was earlier, obviously. Uh, the surface of the molar differs between Asian and African elephants, and the ridges on the chewing surface of the Asian elephant's molar will run in parallel lines while the ridges on the surface of an African elephant's molar will form a diamond shape. Is that because of the different diets? Uh, it doesn't actually say. Why do they never elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> um, it does say that this diamond shape led to the name of genus for African elephants, Loxodonta, which in Latin refers to this diamond shape. Ah. Um, there is no real tooth socket 
as a molar is formed and utilised by the elephant, it passes through the jaw from the back to the front in a conveyor belt like fashion. Oh, right. There are only four molars in use in the elephant's mouth at any one time, but an elephant may go through six sets of molars in a lifetime. The final set typically erupts when the animal hits its early 40s and must last the rest of its lifetime. Yeah, we were discussing earlier, most times elephants don't actually uh, die of old age, they die because they can't eat anymore, which I think is really sad. But. Um, so, in addition to elephants, um, manatees and kangaroos also have teeth that move forward in the jaw in the same sort of fashion oh, as right. elephants. I think they're related out the manatees. I'm not sure. Could be wrong, but I'm sure I read somewhere. Well, look, what did you say? A hyrax was closest. Um, yes. Yeah. I found that really surreal. A hyrax is the closest relative. <laughs> or one of the closest relatives to the elephant. Genetically speaking, it's the closest relative to the elephant. If you Google hyrax, they just look like little rodents. <laughs> Forgot to mention, sometimes we blend with brushes too, which gives a really nice time for blend with brushes too which gives a really nice, fluffy, soft kind of... As long as you get the direction in the right, the right way, you can get a really nice fit. Right. So a recent study has shown that not only do elephants use their ears to keep cool, they also have the ability to create hot spots around the body. All right. Um, findings by researchers at two new universities in Vienna revealed that they cool down by increasing blood flow to skin patches in other parts of their body to keep themselves cool. So they can control where the heat goes? Yes. Very interesting. First, the researchers took thermal imaging of six African elephants at Vienna Zoo and move between outdoors and indoor environments to see temperature changes in the skin. Bright yellow and white colours indicated parts of the, of the body from which the animal was losing the most heat. Re researchers found up to 15 hot spots scattered all over the elephant's body surface, Interesting. in addition to the large patches on their ears. Um, the study, which was published in the Journal of Thermal Biology, shows how these patches expand as the air temperature increases and more blood flows nearer to the skin surface. Subsequent experiments showed that the elephants in the wild use the same thermal windows to control their body temperatures. Interesting. I didn't know about that one. Also, um, do you know the body temperature of an elephant very similar to humans, just one degree lower? I expected you to say higher than that. Oh, lower. Oh. And they have a really slow heart rate to go with it, don't they? They do. 
but yes all these little tricks they do with the hot spots it keeps them consistently at 36 degrees that's really clever um, one professor of Oxford University um, said it was possible that the hot spots provided localized cooling for specific organs. Mm. It's, he said there is an interesting study as it shows that elephants can do flood, can and do flood blood through their ears independently and can open and close specific areas of their skin for blood cooling. So it's like it's not just random. No. No, it, it's uh, kind of that leg's hot. I'll I'll pull some blood through there. Yeah. That's really cool. I suppose when you live in a hot place like Africa, though, you've got to adapt. Let's have a bit about the elephant's body. The elephant's body has a large, uh, uh, has special features because it's so large and heavy. The skull, um, parts of which are six inches thick, contain air spaces making it appear something like a honeycomb or a sponge right this adaptation has allowed the skull to grow to the large size without enormous weight the legs of an elephant are in an almost vertical position under the body like legs of a table Yep. This design provides strong support for the massive body and huge weight that the legs carry. It also allows the elephants to sleep standing up without risk of their legs buckling. Kind of like a horse. Yes. I'm going to see you sparingly with the light in this area. Are you good at uh, this is where the 150,000 comes into the trunk. It has 40,000 muscles, but it has 150,000 individual parts to the trunk. Ah, that makes sense then. <laughs> That's insane. Mm. How many did we say was in a person again? Um, the human body only has 639 muscles. 639 muscles. Versus 40,000 just in the trunk. Yeah. <laughs> Sad fact of um, 100 elephants per day on average die to, due to poaching. You put it into the perspective of per day. Yeah. That's too many. We were saying earlier as well, um, before Europeans colonised Africa, it was estimated that there were 26 million elephants roaming and once Americans, uh, Americans, Europeans <laughs> uh, kicked off the ivory trade by the early 20th century there were 10 million and today there are around 400,000 but 27,000 of those are killed every year and like Jimmy said that's like 100 elephants a day every single day
It's, it's got to be more. Okay. Right, you guys heard of that? Well, um, Ivory, obviously, we've discussed what it's used for, for like the lead balls, piano keys, chopsticks, um, organ keys, decoration, jewelry. Yeah. It's also used for electrical equipment for airplanes and radar. How random! Which could explain why it's taken a lot of governments so long to put an Ivory banner out there. Yeah! Surely we've got alternatives now. We must have, but yes, um, but at some that. point we've used ivory. Some places probably still do, but... Wow! So, a bit about the elephant's drunk. Um, it's four times as sensitive to smell as a bloodhound scent. I'm uh -huh. sorry, to carry on. According to reports, an elephant can smell water from miles away. An elephant has a heightened sense of smell due to the millions of receptors in its upper nasal cavity. They have more nerve endings too, don't they? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like more than almost any other mammal. And their great sense of smell is why they're also, it's quite ironic I think, they're, they're being used to actually track perches. So they've found that they're really good for like, obviously going through any terrain. So yeah, if an elephant's on your tail, you're pretty much done for. Um, an elephant um, can live and adapt to its habitat. So there are very few that can live in all different habitats from forests, savannas, deserts to marshes. They're adaptable. Yes. And it's actually debated as to whether or not um, African elephants are two separate species because there's the savanna or bush elephant, which are I've just recently read of the same elephant. And then there's the uh, forest elephant, which is a lot smaller and it shares a lot of genetic differences as well, doesn't it? Yeah. They were both classed as you know, the same, self same thing. Um, They're still so from early 2000s. Early 2000s. Yeah, um, and then they changed them to being the bush and um, forest, but it's still widely debated. I think so it's still argued. Yes. Uh, um, a little fact of Botswana has more elephants than any other country. Botswana? Yeah, the arid expanse of savannas in Botswana home. Botswana holds more elephants than any other country in the world. Furthermore, South Africa as a whole houses more than 290,000 elephants, which is 70% of the remaining population of African elephants. That's Another interesting fact is that elephants seem to be evolving in response to perching uh, in areas where perchers, perching numbers are highest. Um, elephants are being born without tusks. So there's a good chance that in the future maybe we'll either have a new species or all of them just won't have tusks because they're what put them at risk. But then in turn there lies a problem of 
how they'll how they'll manage out. their ecosystem and do what they do. Yeah, because through that evolution, they're also making a sacrifice. Yeah. Oh, so they might not. To go back to the sensitivity, um, found a little bit more information on it. Um, obviously, we said before it's got the largest brain of any land animal, but above all else, it has thrice as many neurons than a human. Uh, these are the cells within the nervous system that transmit information to other nerve cells. So this explains why elephants have such a heightened sense, other than uh, higher than us. Um, yeah, three times the amount. Yeah, that's all the stuff. I'm not careful. It will leave lines, but as long as they're going the right way. Where are you? She says nearly dropping the lot. <laughs> now we're right near the end. Do we have any questions? So in terms of um, how long a baby um, relies on its mother for, um, nutritionally, a baby elephant will rely on its mother for milk until um, three to four years old. Wow, that's a long time. It is. Although a calf may start eating plants as early as two years old, they will still consume milk from their mother. And how long till they leave the hair? Um, the female, highly unlikely to leave. Unless kicked out of the hair. A male will leave from 12 years old, round adolescence. Kicked Basically. out and told, get on with it. <laughs> um, and then they, as we said, we've previously said, he'll go to a bachelor herd until he fully matures. It's very similar to us, like, going off to college, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're more like 16 or 18, depending on where you are in the world, but... even 21. Yeah, 12 years old, it's like, bye-bye! Yes, yeah. yeah, so and then once he's fully mature, he'll quite happily live a solitary life, or just move from head to head, when necessary. Yeah, presumably breeding purposes. Yes. And presumably the work go back to their hair because Oh, we're past the watershed for the UK, so we'll talk a bit about this. Elephants have the biggest penis of all land animals. All oh, right. Elephants also tower over the rest of the animal kingdom in terms of their genitalia. Oh. An elephant's penis measures six inches in diameter wow. and an average length of 39 inches long. Now, I heard, but this was years ago on a documentary, and I don't know if it still stands, um, they don't actually penetrate. They fire like a high-powered hose. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't come to that fact yet. Yeah. Mm 
Build those docks up the way I want it. I love this piece of music. Elephants, like humans, male elephants, like male humans, um, have a common problem in the heightening of testosterone when they hit puberty. Um, in a male elephant, it's called a uh, muster. And During the muster period, temples. Yes, its testosterone levels can become 60 times greater than the average elephant's testosterone level. Um, Probably. Can you imagine that tantrum? It's also thought that this could be one reason why they're kicked out of the herd at the time that they are. Um, because according to research, the muster is problematic um, even in the calmest of elephants. And they can become very violent um, towards other elephants. Um, and very, very temperamental and moody. Mm. So you basically kicked out because you're going to be a trouble causer. Pretty much, yeah. You basically learn to deal with your own emotions. Get out. <laughs> they're normally the ones you see in like videos where they're chasing cars and stuff as well. Yes. Adolescents. You often notice like the sides of the head. They look like almost sweaty, or some people say that they're crying, and it's not. It's basically signs of high testosterone and so here's one for you a single elephant can produce around a ton of feces per week a ton of feces per week yeah no, in, in the wild I can see that being useful like for spreading seeds, but I bet in captivity that's a lot of work. <laughs> yes! <laughs> so yes, in, uh, in the wild it says consequently their massive excretion contributes to the environment as it keeps the soil fertile and scatters seed. So, elephants use both Infrasound and seismic communication. Seismic's the low level, isn't it? Yes. Through the ground. Basically, vibrations. They mm. feel it through their feet. It's really cool. It's like a whole secret language we can't hear. And it's quite advanced. So, an elephant skeleton is composed of up to 351 bones. Um, there are a difference in the amount of ribs within an African and an Asian elephant. Uh, an Asian elephant has 20 pairs of ribs, whereas an African elephant only has, 20, uh, has 21 pairs of ribs. How many is an Asian elephant? At 20, so they have one more set of pair of ribs to... Af Africans have one yeah. more. Africans have one more than an Asian. Ah. So, and the elephant's vertebrae are connected by tight joints, 
which limits their backbone flexibility. Yeah, you're never going to see them doing backflips. Just handstands. Just handstands. <laughs> Elephants will often seek mineral salt as a supplement. They do, you see them licking cave walls and... Yeah, in spring. Kenya they have been observed um, mining for salt in underground caves with their tusks. The mineral salt is essential for the elephant's teeth and health. They search for the mineral wherever they cannot get sufficient sodium from their food and woody plants. I'm assuming that they need quite a lot of the size of them. Yes, the function. So in terms of the pregnancy again, when I've just read here that the blue whale is the next to have the, one of the longest gestation periods. Now the blue whale is 10 to 12 months. So an elephant is double the amount really of any other. I thought mammal. a blue whale was longer. Here it says um, uh, even a blue whale's gestation period lasts only 10 to 12 months. Right, so now elephant is 22. 22. It's insane. With the amount of miles they walk, that must be something hard. Yeah. That might be one of the reasons, actually, that the legs have to, and the muscles have to develop so they can be walking pretty much from birth. Yes. There's a connection to that, isn't there? So. So typically elephants can only carry one baby at a time, however there is still around a 1-2% to chance that an elephant may carry twins. Which is why they can have a maximum of two every four years. Around. Even with gestation period you don't even fit two in. In the, the most famous elephant twins, just a little fun fact, are named Emma and Elon Tusk. Elon Tusk, really? In 2018, twin elephants were born in the wild from a herd of African elephanta. The calves were aptly named Emma and Elon Tusk. Their mother, Eloise, was five years old when she gave birth to the twins. That's quite young, isn't it? Yeah, but it was wild, so... Yeah. Whenever it decides it wants to, I suppose. Yeah. Elon Tusk, that, that is the best name. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he knows. <laughs> He's got an elephant name, doesn't he? Oh, so although the twins were born in the wild, um, they are now at Wildlife Conservation Society. Um, where researchers are monitoring the development. Mm. Um, they also have helped in keeping these two alive due to the fact that um, a mother elephant can only produce enough milk for one. Yeah. So there is a very high mortality rate in elephant offspring. 
in in um, twins in elephants. Um, it also states that with other animals, a mother will make a choice. Can you shut that on, please? Um, and if she hasn't got enough milk, she will discard one of the children. Right. Whereas an elephant, because of the emotional bond it has, won't do that. It will fight and fight to try and feed birth. And more often than not, lose birth calves due to this. Makes sense. Again, like a human. Yes. So, um, that's a slight downfall, and downfall for them. Because, um, it means that rather than one surviving like most animals would choose to do. Yeah, she don't want to let either one She go. won't let either one go, so in the long term, usually birth day, unfortunately. So human intervention is important sometimes. Yes. As I say, Elon Tusk and Emma Tusk. Elon Tusk and Emma Tusk. Um, are both now <laughs> at the Wildlife Conservation Society. I know it looks like I'm going over the same lines over and over again, but I'm actually... There's method in my madness, and it'll all become clear. I've lost my pencil. Oh, there it is. So, as you were saying before, a bit, a bit more facts on this, um, that a baby elephant has no control over its trunk, yeah, they just like wave it around and um, take a while to learn how to control it. A while is not the word. A while um, is not the word. <laughs> a calf normally gets used to its trunk after a year. So, although my newborns can be mobile, um, and although still unsteady on its feet for the first uh, few days, it will walk from, uh, can walk from around 20 minutes after birth. Right. Um, in its second week, a calf can walk quite steadily and will start to learn how to control its tusk. Tusk? Uh, its trunk, sorry. Oh. Uh, its trunk properly. Furthermore, within just one month, a calf can pick up, hold and put things in its mouth using its trunk. However, they still can't suck water through its trunk and instead they will drink directly using their mouth. Can you imagine can, learning that though, like getting no water up your nose? Yeah, it, must it can be... take up to a year before they learn how to use their trunk to bathe and drink. I just keep thinking about what it feels like when you accidentally inhale water yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like, can't be pleasant learning that lesson. <laughs> I still can't get a very long tusk. That's amazing. This is quite unbelievable. Um, as humans, we have used elephants for labour since we uh, with what? use them for labour tasks like carrying. Oh, we were talking about babies <laughs> and pregnancies, I'm like, huh? Uh, <laughs> exploited for labour. Right. Um, carrying things in and whatnot. 3300 BCE to 1300 BCE. 3300 BCE to 1300 BCE. Yeah, and that is the, the earliest indication that we've been using elephants for labour tasks. Hundreds of years. Yes. Um, and as far as I know, we still use them because they're still the most efficient. Yes for clearing in dense forest because you can't get uh, tra uh, tractors, but not tractors, diggers and things like that. They're just 
without destroying the whole environment, you can't get them through, but elephants. So, up until the 1950s, um, say a quick hello to Vikash Kumar. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for watching. May we ask where you are from? Yeah, where are you from? Um, I'm intrigued. Now I'll go back to reading this fact. Yeah, before the 1950s when tranquilizers were introduced, elephants were captured using ropes and pit traps. Alright. Uh, that must have been um, stressful and challenging. Going back to do we still use them now for labour? In the year 2000, over 13,000 elephants um, were recorded as working in captivity in Asia. Right. That's just in Asia. These elephants generally came from the wild, captured between the age of 10 and 20 years old and trained to be used as tourist attractions. Now that's going back to what we said earlier of yeah. the elephant rides. We don't, I don't um, agree with that side of it, I'll be honest. No, but the way that they're all trained, it, it isn't. It's not human. No, it isn't. Do we have a response on where he's from? Not as yet, no. Do you have any questions? Anyone? Feel free to join us on the chat. If you're on computer, it's to the right of the video, and if you're on mobile, it should be below, I think. These trunks are amazing to grow. I love all the textures. I'm so close to the end of this bit. Blending. Now this is a paper stump, which are nice for soft lines and don't leave much evidence behind, unlike some other tools. It's the closest thing you'll find to a finger spoon. If you've got any questions or uh, about anything really, whether it's about the elephant I'm drawing or wildlife in general or disability or eat about me, 
feel free to ask and I shall answer to the best of my abilities. Just make sure you keep it family friendly and then we'll all be good. Do you have any more facts for the shimmer? No, not at the moment. I'm trying to find some more. Make sure this tusk stands out. I need white stands out. I need white against the black. I just love all the textures that you can find on elephant skin and there's so many different variations. And all of these wrinkles serve to keep them hydrated. It'll help with uh, absorbing the water basically. Well, holding water. A bit like humps on a camel. The more wrinkles an elephant has, the hotter the area it came from. He's getting there. Do we have any questions, Gemma? You don't, I see it. We don't have anybody watching at the moment. Has it gone silent? They have. Come back. We're at the in between time again. So, I think I'm going to take a five minute break. Well, ten. Ten, fifteen minutes. Yeah. It's back for about half ten. It's quarter past now. So, gives you fifteen minutes. Yeah, I'm not going to go offline, I'll just hit the break button and then we'll be straight back.
Hello again, we're back. And I am going to just finish off this leg bit and then we'll be going into this back trophy bit. And I'll be doing something a little bit different. Lost a little bit, so let's put it back. Right. I don't like it. I don't like it too much. I don't like it. Now, for this, I'll just move the pencils out of the way. This looks really cool, so before I dive in, I'm just going to get Gemma to show you inside this tub. Gemma, can you just pick that up a bit near the camera, please? If you can. It's like sparkly almost. Yeah, <laughs> But yeah, if we can get it to focus. <laughs> I'll hide my head behind. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna get this brush. Which is slightly deformed. There we go. And this will help me cover a bigger area much quicker. Hopefully. Like I said, never used this stuff before, so taking a risk here doing live, but hey, why not? I'm thinking we can get some nice textures of something that might resemble background foliage or something, maybe? We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm covering myself in it. More than um, the paper. I don't know if this brush is too soft actually. I might need to steal one of those. Gemma? Can you just pass me that, um, the round one that's still got a cover on it, please? On this side. That big one, yeah. That should have a bit more body to it. I think these brushes are too soft. Try again. I'm going to look like a coal miner by the end of this. Quite nice and loose, it's like um you can move it around and play with it and put marks into it. Shells off like smoke, it's really cool. I'm kind of staying away at the minute from the elephant just to see what happens because I don't want to undo anything what I've already done. I'm 
not sure how neat I can be with it. So you're just gonna lick my hand and just dampen the brush a little bit. Which might give me a bit more control. There we go. Yeah, the tiniest bit of moisture helps. I really like this. It's going absolutely everywhere though. Mm. And it kind of lifts up as well. Interesting. It's very loose. be a nice base to work on anyway. It doesn't need to be anything too accurate because it's just out of focus. We don't want anything too too detailed for the background because it'll draw away from how gorgeous Charlie the Elephant. But it is weirdly like painting with smoke. The way the dust just flies everywhere. And I'm sure there's people watching who are like, you're doing it wrong! But we learn from experimentation. So I'm, I'm quite happy making a mess, covering my elbow in black. <laughs> I'm going to dampen it again because that seems to work really well. Well, I thought I heard that I probably got a pot of water, but Licking it works just the same. Good. That's what I'm doing. Oops. That was actually lifted. I would do that. Oh my god, I'm grafted. And I'm also lifting it off now. That's interesting. So if it's too wet, it lifts off. That's in land. <laughs> well, you will use a new product for the first time live on camera. Yeah, but it's fun, isn't it? What <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> this rush will do? I have different brushes to test it with. Nice strokes. I 
So he likes hard brushes. We learn as we go. You'll notice I'm turning the brush a lot because that means it works. If it does leave lines, they'll all be in the same direction. So it looks more natural. Sweep that up. Oh, I should build up dark with pencils. Filled in a decent amount more. So we can go for like a two variegated kind of texture, which I'll then blend. want it nice and dark against these tusks because it'll make it stand out better It's only really things like drawing where you can actually do this. Because if you if you if you're painting, it's much better to do your background first so that you don't have any outlines left around the animal. Whereas with these, you can kind of crisscross so that it doesn't. We can just make up different plants or anything. 
and no one will really question it because it's in the background, it's out of focus. But it creates a setting for the elephant. Can you reach out on that for me, please? Thank you. some bobs We get some lights and darks. There's hints of things. Like I said, nothing too specific. Because we don't want to draw our attention away from the elephant. <clears throat> if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Because we are near the end of this now. trying not to draw as well with too many lines in the same direction because that makes it look odd. Makes it look odd. Mm. My music's finished, I've just noticed. It's out. That's alright. So close to the end now. Seven back. She says hello. It's looking good. Hi. Almost done. It's taken forever. <laughs> I apologise if anyone hates this scribbling sound. Not a lot I can do about it. Which Sarah is it? Carousel. Ah, Carousel. 
We had mop it earlier. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I'm a poet and I didn't know it, but Carousel. Carousel. No, it rhymes. It did. He's looking for it. Wonder if he thinks it's the mouse. What? I don't know. That was the comment. Max is looking for what? Sarah. Uh, Max is looking for what? If you're watching on the telly. The scratching sound. Ah. <laughs> oh, hi, Max. <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know, Max is a kitten. <laughs> Before you think I'm being weird, like. <laughs> no, she's not watching on TV this time, she's watching on the phone. Ah. Close to the end of this. See, technically, I could have left it in all I care, but I care. Always do some upright bits in there just in case it looks like something, something natural. to redefine the ear. Excuse me. Beep up in my mouth. So yeah, nice highlight here. Um. 
combine it with some shadows. Just to redefine that here. And I think we're about done. She says still drawing. I always do this. But yeah, you can see now because I've put the dark at this side of the leg. really makes the light pop. Oh, just spotted a bit here. A little bit of shadow and the reflected light. Paper and everything in my mouth right now. And you feel these highlights. Especially just over there. Get a nice rounded blend around the leg. And I think, apologies, my blender's falling apart in my mouth. Anyway, I just want to show you something anyway. Uh, that's what I was looking for. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Actually, Gemma, can you just lift my arm up? <laughs> I'll show everyone what I've done to myself <laughs> in the process. Look at that! <laughs> Just black elbows. <laughs> I've got to get that off later. Yeah, you've got to get that off later. <laughs> but yeah, there you have it. It's done. Do you want to move the camera so they can see better? I don't know how far that cable will reach, but... Let like me adjust my legs. <laughs> There you go. One Charlie elephant Charlie. complete. Yeah. Just need to sign it and then I'll post it online. And yeah, so 
thank you very much for watching and thank you for everyone who supported this uh, please check out lippyart.tv and lippyart.co.uk and don't forget to follow lippyart across all of the social medias that you can find um, yeah and if you've got any questions or recommendations for our next videos feel free to leave them down in the comments and I will read them and I will try to reply to as many as possible and I will note down any kind of suggestions people make for my next videos so thank you and I hope you enjoyed it so good night or day depending on where you are in the world